Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to some and peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. Let me start by giving three shouts out. First, Revelator and Mebane for coming through on Cash App. And I mean that from the bottom of my black heart and from the depths of my black mind. Third shout out is why I'm doing this, and that is to S. Jock for coming through on Cash App and the emails with the links. As Jock made me aware of a situation in which a man named Jones in uh, Indiana shot a man named Nelson who owns a barbecue shop or owned. He killed him. Nelson hired Jones to do some work and Jones and Nelson got into a dispute about the money. And my assumption is that the disputes are either going to be based on when the money's paid or how much it is. Now, I'm going to assume that they agreed on a price and a job. So what does that leave to argue about? That leaves two possibilities. If my assumption's right, then I either Jones went up on the price or they argued about a schedule of payments upon which they had not previously agreed unless somebody had decided to change it. Whatever the case was, Jones shot Nelson. I've been in that situation in Atlanta, but it was not to the point where we shot. But I've dealt with people. I've made agreements with with our kind hood brothers to do something. And then later on, somehow it costs more than what we agreed. And I've usually told them that if I pay the extra, this means they can never ask me if I need this work done again. Period. They can never ask again. That if I pay extra on top of what we initially agreed because they just came with a higher number later, they can have that. But they cannot come and ask me again. And it comes with an agreement. If someone asked me what kind of work they do, I'd say he knows what he's doing, but he's not going to tell you the truth about the price. He's going to ask you for more after he finishes. Is that what they want to do? This is the agreement. And. They usually would take that. They didn't like it. They always had something to say about it. But um, those are pookies. This was a pookie that shot Nelson. I don't assume he just had to have started the argument. I think it's more likely, but I'm not telling you to assume that he started the argument and Nelson uh, provoked nothing at all. I'm telling you this, my guess, based on my experience. Because you see, when you're black and you go into the hood to invest and you open up something, I'm going to tell you what it is that really undoes a lot of black owned businesses opening up in the hood. And that is when black folk know that this is your business, they know you, they know you black and that's your business. They don't respect it the same. You already know why it's ain't going to support and patronize it is black owned. They're not there for that. You already know that. You also know that our people ain't going to do that. So why do we go and invest in the hood? Well, there's a way you can do it, but you can't do it that way. See, when you're black and, and everyone knows that it's your business, they're always looking to gain what they didn't give. It's always that, always looking to cut a corner. Most people probably wouldn't do it, but there's, you're going to be beset and besieged by those who will. They could be four or five people, but they're going to be the ones that do it. They're going to be the ones you always got to deal with. They want you to pay them to do some work. Then they want you to pay extra. 
but they want to hook up when it's time for them to buy something. You're going to have the same people just hanging outside your business, hanging in your business, not buying nothing, always asking for the hookup or deciding I'm going to open up a tab and I'm going to pay you back when I get paid and they never get paid. The real issue here was black entrepreneurship in a black context. That's the real issue here. This one resulted in a shooting. But how many other times do these same arguments and grudges develop because you black and you open up this black business in a black area and the populace decided they just going to take advantage? I've done this before I told you. I worked for, when I was young, I worked for a black owned bank. I shouldn't have. I was treated well by the other employees for the most part. Except for this boom shika type sister that I worked with as a teller. But you know what? Where I lived, I could have worked at one branch with a nice clientele. Or I could have worked at the older branch with the niggas. And of course, that's where they sent me, the jigaboos. Not black folk. But niggas who think that the Tarzan movies were an accurate depiction of what we are. And that's what they walked into the branch with. Walking in begging. Walking in with no accounts trying to make withdrawals. They don't have an account, but they're trying to make a withdrawal. Imagine that. Thinking we just that stupid. The foolishness didn't quit. It didn't stop. We had ninjas coming in high, withdrawing every little last bit of money out their account. And then coming in the next day trying to say that we owed them that money still because we let them take the money out when they were high. You know what? We're not supposed to police that. You weren't unconscious. You just own drugs. And we. We had people engaging in check kiting. The bank, see, check kiting is something people that uh, I don't think people do it much anymore, but they had to have two different bank accounts. And it had to be very quick and timely in terms of just depositing from one check to the other and hoping that the bank was going to just sometimes the banks would do is make the funds available before the bank on which the check was drawn would release the funds to them. Sometimes they do that, but the bank that caught it is the one that didn't get burned. And we're doing that with us. Same neighborhood, you had some white banks down the street. Our branch manager said that she went in there uh, one day just to see because she knew that some of our uh, clients had accounts at this other one. So she just went down the street to see how they'd act there and they didn't act the same way. And I made my mind up at that point that I was never going to start a business that catered to mostly our people and put it in our area. And I'm going to tell you what it is that has helped some black owned businesses of people that I, that I know and that my mother knows to succeed. You know what it is? They act like they're managers and not owners. My mom's friends that had businesses acted like they worked there and they were managers, but not the owners. Man, Black Johnson did it. He was done in, not even by the clients. He was done in by somebody else he trusted to help him run it. My mother's longtime friend in New Orleans, um, I think may still have that business. She's been acting like she's the manager for decades. It's hers. But she's been acting like she's the manager. Um, another friend of my mother. Same thing. 
It's her business. She has a white husband. She's not really a close friend of my mother. My mom don't associate with black women and marry white men on a close level. She don't do that. Of course, they're very rare and few anyway. But this lady that my mom knows, of course, she hired her husband. She acts like he's the manager and she's the employee, but in in actuality, she's the owner and he's the employee. Now, he's on board with it because he also understands that they get the business because no one knows that it's black owned. I know, right? Can you imagine, though? This is what the hell it takes, and it's taken us before. And I believe there's even a movie about a black man who owns a business, but he's had to use a white fellow as a front to pretend. That's real. And that's what it takes. And it is not only because whites are going to leave your business alone, but it is because the few parasites that are in our population are going to be the main ones that are going to go there because they're going to be the ones to act like they're doing you a favor, even if you're doing your job and earning their money. They act like they're doing you a favor by paying you. That's how they do it. And that's how they act. That's how they run it. And so, unfortunately, this led to a shooting. But that's the thing. If you're going to really go into some of the baddest areas, the worst areas, trying to invest, that's what's going to happen. Your best bet, if you are black, your best bet is to open up something where either you're out, really, in all honesty, your best bet is to be somewhere outside of the U.S. where you're allowed to open and own the business. That's your best bet. Because once you go into the hood to do it, you're going to besiege, be besieged by parasites. And if you got to be in North America to do it, then your best bet is to have someone as a front that people think is the one that actually owns it whole time you own it. You, you know, you act like you're an employee and a manager, but it's yours. You got to do it that way. Now, I do want you to understand that we're not the only people that have that problem. Arabs have a hard time opening up certain businesses that cater to each other because Arabs don't want to pay each other either. See, you'll pay the Arab even if you don't like them. They'll serve you even if they don't like you. So business is good for that reason, for them. Same with the Chinese. If they don't like you, they'll still serve you. You don't like them, you'll still pay them. If you like them, you'll pay them. If they like you, they'll serve you. But you remove the the like and you all will still conduct the business. But see, Arabs won't do that with each other. You think, oh, they support each other's businesses. Man, that's some sure bit. In Atlanta, you can go to 14th Street Masjid, Al Farouk Masjid. So like a center masjid, it's not the oldest one. Don't get it twisted. It might be the biggest, I'm not sure. But it ain't the oldest. And the school next to it is not the oldest Muslim school in Atlanta. Don't get that up for me. It was black folk that started it. Oldest uh, masjid and oldest school. But what I want you to know and understand is that you can even go there. And there's some business that's right next to it. It used to be a Middle Eastern restaurant owned by one of the Arab Muslim guys in, in that area. He sold it. Eventually, but you know what he had to do? He had to turn around and get African American to work there. Because when he was there, the Arabs would come in, they'd hang out, they'd eat, then they when it was time to pay. Oh, you know I'm gonna pay you back. I'm good for it. So don't think we're the only people to do it, but we're worried about ourselves right now. That's what I want you to think about. So don't think you're the only ones, no. But what I do want you to know is that when you do it, what is different is that you're going to be beset by parasites and some of them are willing to go to the pistol in order to make sure that they either get more out of you than what you owe them or that they don't pay you what they owe you. 
that is going to be an issue. Chinese would try to avoid the guns. Same with these other groups. And most of us will too, but we're going, you as a black business owner in a black area are going to be besieged by the ones that are not willing to leave the guns alone because they're always looking for a corner to cut and you don't let them cut them corners, they're going to get violent. Even if they're a minority of the population. Now you'll find people like that too. And other groups of uh, people, it's just that normally find them in their home countries. That's all. There are Arabs that'll do that too, but they're here. They're not over there with you. Normally, it's not in the context of a business. Here, what it is, it has. Uh, you find that at, when, it, when it comes to academics, some of them cheat, cut corners. They always do. And when you catch them cheating and you won't let them cut corners, they might resort to violence. I got one student that's probably going to do that. If he ever sees me around here. He'll do that. He'll try to resort to violence because I wouldn't let him cheat. He gave up trying, stormed out. Because to me, it was like, look, your your English is jacked up. You didn't write this. Then you're not going to turn it in and get a full mark. Look, I'm not going to change the question that I gave you. Look, I'm not going to give you four points for that jacked up grammar you used to answer that question. No, bro. Four points. No, the full mark is from somebody that answered it correctly like him, not you with your broken English and think you're supposed to get the same mark. How that's fair. Dude cheated all the time, every time. But you find them here, not over there with you. It's the same thing with you. You want to open up a business, your best bet, if, if you if you want people to know that it is yours, your best bet is going to be to do it outside of North America. Because you know what? One thing that does happen when you go abroad is that people are not out there boycotting black owned businesses. If you can open up a business in Bangkok, they're not going to boycott it because it's yours. That's not true. That's not what they're going to do. And if you don't believe me, you can ask Paris Craft. That's his name. That's also his YouTube channel name. You can find him on there. They're not boycotting this business because he's black. He and I met at an airport. Met at the Doha airport. We were next to each other in line. Good conversation. If you open up a business in the Philippines, they're not going to boycott you because you're black. You got a better shot there because you know what? If it's one of their own that opens it up, they might try to always get it on credit like he owes them, but not to you. And you are not going to feel comfortable cheating them because, you know, eventually they'd gang up on you for that. So it's good for business. That's the truth of the matter. Because you're not from there, you get to set the tone when you do go. But when it comes to business, Many people have a hard time running an efficient and successful business amongst their own people. Many do. And so I wanted you to understand that there was that, that this came to a head. One of its most extreme results was right here in between um, Jones and Nelson when Jones shot Nelson. I want you all to think about that. But in reality, it's always under the surface when most people that have been under under the thumb of white supremacy in any way, form or fashion, many people of color become entrepreneurial, but they don't leave their people. That happens across the board. But now I'm letting you know that happens. You see, the Arab doesn't know that this is also something that happens with the Indians in India. They don't know that. They don't realize that. The Bengali thinks that the Indian has it all together. No, they don't. The um, the Chinese think that the Japanese have it all together. They don't. The Chinese don't have it all together. You and I think the Vietnamese have it all together. The Vietnamese thinks the Chinese have it all together. The Chinese thinks that the Koreans and the South, uh, the South Koreans and the Japanese got all their stuff together. They don't really have it all together. But what is the case? is that neither one of them knows that these other groups go through the same thing internally. However, however, 
you have it a little bit extra to worry about. Because when there is a dispute, somebody's going to pick up some kind of weapon if it goes on long enough. And I don't have, I can't in good conscience. That's why I don't talk to you about entrepreneurship that much. You want me to talk about entrepreneurship instead of these hoes in the games they play on you? Okay, that's what I'll tell you to do. Either you fake like somebody else owns the business, even though you own it, or you leave North America and go somewhere where they're not going to boycott you because you're black. Those are your options. But you can't go into the hood and let them know that that you, that black person, owns this business because they're not going to try to... The, many people just can't really patronize it enough. But most of them ain't going to try to take advantage of you either. But the ones who will try to could be four. They will be there every day, all the time. And that's what you're going to experience. The hyper availability of the bad options. And that's what I wanted us to learn from this. I hope this helps. Thank you for listening as always. Black heart, black mind, black out. I slam lake and black heterosexual non-select male power because they don't like it and black patriarchy until extinction of judgment day. Thank you for flying with me again here on Jet Black Airways where the phrase Jet Black is also a verb. Keep Jet Black with us till the wings and the wheels fall off. Gender, Justice forever.